Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to talk about the continuity equation, finally. Uh, once we get past this and get through a few examples, we can finally get into some actual uh, semiconductor devices and analyzing PN junctions, uh, MOS transistors, and MOSFETs and stuff like this. But uh, we got to get through this stuff first. And uh, So to start with the continuity equation, we need to know a few things from... Uh, uh, back from uh, electromagnetics and electromagnetism, and that's uh, that's uh, Ampere's law, and uh, this is part of um, this comes from Gauss's uh, Gauss's law, and um, actually it's Gauss's law here in differential form, del uh, E equal to the charge integral over E. Okay. So um, the uh, from uh, you know vector calculus to vector calculus, you know the divergence of a curl is always zero. So the divergence, this is curve, this is uh, this this term del times anything is divergence. Curl is del cross uh, cross product um, with anything, uh, any say you know magnetic field density or something that's equal to zero, right? Um, so knowing this, and h could be anything, any vector, right? Um, knowing this and knowing um, Ampere's law right here. Uh, let's do the uh, the uh, divergence on both sides of Ampere's law, right? Del dot del cross H is equal to del dot current density J plus del change in electric flux density per unit time, just like that, right? Um, okay, well that's equal to zero, right? Because this is equal to zero. So what I have is uh, del j, del dot j, which is our, our uh, current density, is equal to our negative del uh, d of electric flux density over dt. Right? And we know that electric flux, that, uh, flux density d is equal to, to little e times electric field, right? just like that. Right? So um, an electric field is related through Coulomb's law to the uh, charge density in the, uh, in the semiconductor, right? So uh, E, e you know, is basically equal to, um, or del E, yeah, del E is equal to rho over E, right? Just like that. So. Um, now that I have that, I can rewrite this. Oops, I forgot to put the del. Right, I can actually rewrite this. Del dot j is equal to negative d of del dot d over dt. Right? And then I can simplify that knowing this and using this relation right here right, to del j is equal to um, e del oops using this equation right here yeah. and this is equal to uh, negative del charge density over del t, right? So let's say we're just considering uh, electron charge density, right? We're just considering electron current. That's why I only wrote this right up here. Well, then uh, what is our charge density? We're not talking about doping right now. So charge density rho is basically just negative n times uh, charge D, right? So that gives me del dot j is equal to negative E del N over del T. Just like that. Okay? Uh, I can buy, I'm going to divide both sides by negative. Uh, oh, this be, oh it's, this becomes positive, right? Uh, because this is negative. negative. Negative becomes a positive, right? Okay, so let me erase some stuff here. Let me write this up here. Del J equals or one over E. Del J, del dot J equals V N over D T. Okay. 
So what can we do here? What is del j? What is j? j is this right here. So it's del j n. So this becomes 1 over e. And we're just going to do this in one dimension, right? Just uh, in the x direction. So it's uh, uh, d over dx e n mu sub n uh, e plus e b sub n uh, d n over dx, right? Is equal to d n over d t. Okay. So now that we have this, uh, erase this. Uh, important thing to remember here is n and an electric field E, you know, uh, electron density and electric field are both functions of x, right? So that means here we're going to have to use the product rule, right? So all my E's are going to cancel out, so it makes, makes it a little bit nicer. And then I have, um, using product rule, n mu sub n uh, d E over dx plus mu sub n e dn over dx. That takes care of this term. I move on to this term plus d sub n d squared n over dx squared is equal to dn del n over del t. Okay. It's one dimension, so I don't even really need to use del. I can just use d. You know, that's the proper, proper calculus. Uh, so uh, that's our continuity equation uh, just uh, involving our conduction current. But there is a second uh, term that we have to add to this now. Um, this just uh, takes into account electrons moving um, longitudinally through the, uh, through the semiconductor due to a gradient and an electric field. However, another kind of current that occurs in semiconductors is the generation and recombination of electron hole pairs. So when we go back to our EK plots, something like this, you know, electrons and holes can be generated or recombined, you know, and this generation and recombination leads to a current, right? Some, uh, some generation and some recombination thing, right? So, what we want to do to this is the, the, net, uh, the net generation uh, rate, uh, generation current rate, is equal to Gn minus Rn. So we're going we're gonna to make an amendment to this, uh, to this equation. I'm going to say it's uh, Gn minus Rn plus n. So Gn is the rate in which electron hole pairs are generated in a semiconductor. And R, R sub n is the rate in which they are they recombine, you know. And um, in an intrinsic uh, semiconductor under, under equilibrium conditions, these terms actually should cancel out and be zero, right? Um, so the whole continuity equation, so I'm going to rewrite it here. Uh, I'm do it for holes and electrons, right? So you can do, go through the same, same equation for holes using the term J uh, P equals to E P mu sub P E minus E B sub P uh, D P over D X. And we'll find we get the we get the same thing. So uh, D N over D T is equal to mu sub N E uh, D N over D X uh, plus mu sub N N e over dx plus d sub n d squared n over dx squared plus g sub n minus r sub n, just like that. For a whole, dp over dt is equal to negative p mu sub p uh, de over dx minus uh, mu sub p e dp over dx plus d sub p d squared p over dx squared plus g sub p minus r sub p. You know, just like that. Here's our 
right here. So uh, let's consider an intrinsic semiconductor. You know, an intrinsic semiconductor, del n over del t, well, an intrinsic semiconductor, there's no electric field, so that term goes to zero. There's no doping, so there's no doping gradient, so that goes to zero. Um, there's no doping gradient, so that goes to zero, you know, and there's no generation recombination, so it just should just the whole term should just be zero, right? But if you flash some light that creates with some uh, phonon energy HB, it's going to create some electron hole pair, and you're going to have generation, right? But uh, the, the deal is, is when you generate uh, these electron hole pairs, the min minority carriers are the ones that are going to um, uh, have to do with this equation right here. So if this was, if we were taking like, uh, let's say it wasn't intrinsic, let's say it was a p-type semiconductor and electron holes, uh, hole pairs were created, right? Well then if you have a p-type semiconductor, then n is your minority carrier. And you shine some light on it and electron hole pairs are created. Well these uh, electrons, which are in this sea of, of, uh, of um, ionized acceptors, you know, and holes, are going to want to recombine. You know, they're going to want to recombine with these ionized acceptors, right? And so, um, so eventually, they'll recombine at, at some rate, you know. Um, but we're dealing with silicon, right? So, what do we know about silicon that, that, that kind of presents a, a unique problem? Silicon is not direct band gap. It looks something like this. This is, this is our first Boolean zone, right? It needs to overcome some delta k to uh, create an electron hole pair. This is why they're not very uh, useful for optics. So uh, in order to do that, um, you can go through some phonon energy, right? Well, if you heat up the lattice, right, doesn't your phonon energy increase, right? So you, you can get a change in delta k. Well, yeah, but you're also creating more electron hole pairs when you do that. So it just kind of cancels out the whole process. However, uh, inside silicon and, uh, and other elementary semiconductors, there are impurities. Impurities that, that happen as a result of processing and, and making the material, material that just, uh, are just in there. You can't do anything about it. And those impurities are uh, usually like gold, you know. And uh, the energy uh, level of these, this gold is, uh, you know, something like halfway through the, through the band gap. So electron hole pairs are created. Um, they first go to these, these trap states, you know, and then move up into the conduction band, right? And they create a hold on here. When they recombine, they have to go back down into these trap states and then go back down into the valence band and then recombine to the hole. You know, and this is you know generation and recombination. And that's the whole process. So uh, you know how what's what's the rate? You know, what what kind of uh, what creates this? you know, this energy to take place, and, and uh, that's pretty important. So we're going to consider four different things here. We're going to consider, the first one is going to be called um, electron emission. The second one is going to be called electron capture. The third one is going to be called electron, um, I'm sorry, a hole capture and similarly uh, hole emission, right? What is electron capture? Well, EC, EB. Electron capture means that, um, you know, electron that's in the conduction band goes down to the valence band and gets captured in there. So now we just have an electron here and we have nothing up there. So what would we need for this, right? Well, what we need for this to take place is some constant that's uh, determined uh, quantum mechanically uh, times the number of uh, number of um, you know electrons n uh, times the uh, density of the trap states n t times 1 minus f, right? And this Fermi level here uh, is with respect to the uh, energy trap band right there, right? So and what this means is in order for this to happen, we need electrons here, which are in the conduction band, 
and we need uh, an empty state in the trap band. So this is an ignite command needs to go down to this empty state in the trap band right here. So what about uh, electron? This is electron emission. What about electron capture? Um, Did I get that wrong? Yeah, that's electron emission. Yep, that's not right. <laughs> that's not right at all. Okay. Electron emission is when an electron in the trap band moves up to the conduction band and creates uh, and brings an electron up to the uh, the conduction band from the trap band, right? And in order to do that, we need to have a um, some quantum mechanic, you know, number E E, right? We need to have um, uh, you know a full. St uh, you know, we need to have some number n, and we need to have number of states n t, and we need f. Right? That's the um, that's the uh, uh, probability of a filled state in the uh, in the trap band times density of of, uh, of um, number of states uh, number of of, uh, of the trap density times the number of electrons in the conduction band uh, times some constant C E right? and that's uh, electron cap uh, electron emission right well, similarly for electron capture again it's going to be some constant EC times this N prime, right, which is the number of, uh, it's like the number of uh, generated electrons. And the way that works is an electron up here moves down here, and now we have an empty state here, and then we have an electron in the trap end. Well, we need to have some number of electrons that were created, you know, times, uh, you know, the uh, the, the trap density times an empty state in the trap, right? Just like that. You know, we're going to stop right there. Disregard everything I said about uh, uh, trap recombination, and next time we're going to we're going to talk about that. So.